how to enable conversations with ChatGPT API while maintaining the context. So in the previous video, what we saw was that we created a blog post using the ChatGPT API. But when we followed up another prompt, which included the context of the previous prompt, it did not work. So I was not able to create the FAQs for the article which I had written with the first prompt. So if you remember, the first prompt was where I had asked ChatGPT to write the article. And this was the output which we had got from the ChatGPT at that time with table of contents, learning objective and a SEO friendly blog. And the second prompt which we had given was include 10 FAQs for the above blog post. And what it did was it gave me 10 different, very unrelated FAQs. So it was still able to maintain the structure, but it did not carry the context. Now, in order to do this, what we are going to do is first of all, we are going to create a list called messages. So let me run this. I define first prompt output and I've defined second prompt. Now what I'm doing is I'll store all of these prompts into a list along with the relevant roles. So the first role was user because this was the prompt given by the user. The second one was the output which was created. So hence the role of assistant. And finally the second prompt again with the role of user. So we create this list so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass this on to ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo along with the messages. So all the history gets passed on in form of these messages. So let me go ahead and run this and then print it. Right. So now you can see that all of these FAQs are related to decision trees. So we are able to maintain the context by use of this list which we had created, right? So now I have an exercise for you. So let's say that you want to add an illustration to the same article. And what I want you to do is write the third prompt as an exercise. And in order to do that, you will actually need now a longer message which has the second prompt output as well as the third prompt input with the associated roles. So go ahead and do that exercise so that you get the exact answer to how to maintain this context. Obviously, once the messages are there, you will need to run it uh, and send this to ChatGPT 3.5. Now, assuming you are able to do it, you would be able to see that this becomes very tedious very quickly, right? So if you are, let's say, working on an application where there are hundreds of these prompts which are getting generated, you cannot keep adding those in this manual fashion. So what we need is actually a automated way in which all of these prompts and their outputs get added to the history. And that is what we'll do next. So what we do is we create an empty list again by the name history. And what we then do is that all the user input prompts are added with the role user into history. So we append every time there is a new input message, we append that to history. And then we pass it on to chat GPT. And finally, whatever output comes, we add that again to history, but this time with the role of a assistant. So let me go ahead and execute this. Now, once this is there, let me show how we can carry this context in an automated manner. So I'm going to take a different example this time. What I want to do is actually write a welcome message for all our analytics with their community members. So I go ahead and give this prompt. So now, as you can see, ChatGPT was able to create a good welcome message. It tells what all people can do on Analytics with there and a bit of what Analytics with there is. So good start. But what it does is it is not giving very specific actions. What I want is that this welcome message should have very clear specific actions which the user can take so that they can interact with the community. So what I do is I pass on the second prompt, which is along with this welcome message, what I want is that 
the specific next steps can be added. And I again uh, pass that as a user prompt. And finally, let me see the output for the same. Right, right. So what ChatGPT has done is it has given a very specific set of instructions to the user along with the welcome message. Now, while this works, what it has done is it has taken a message which was, you know, a welcome message and it has made it very specific. What I want to do is I want to actually add a story of how community has helped some of the community members. So what I'm doing is adding another prompt where it is adding to this message further. So I'm saying that add a story to, to this message, which shows the impact of community and learning in the life of a community member. And I still want it to end the message with specific actions. So I pass this new prompt to the chat function and let's see what is the outcome. Right, so as you can see, ChatGPT created a story of a user, John, who was a software engineer, and then explains the specific next steps which the users can take. So this is now a good welcome message where I was able to build on the context. And in order to see the history of uh, prompts we have seen, let's go ahead and print that. So you can see that there were different prompts which were given in different roles. So user assistant, which was the output, again, user assistant, user assistant. So this was able to do it and maintain the context. Now let us say that we have finished this task and I want to now do a new exercise where I want to write a message to the community members the very next day about importance of daily learning in data science. So now I don't actually need the history. So I want to clear up the history. And for that, I'll pass on an additional parameter, which is uh, the value of it is true. What it essentially does is it would clear up the history. By default, it is false. It would essentially clear up the history so that I am starting a free, so that I'm starting a new task. Right, so here is the new message. And as you can see, this is completely new, doesn't carry over any context. And just to see that, let's go through the history. And as you can see, the history only has one input and one output, nothing else, right? So just to recap what all we have seen till now, right? So first of all, we were able to create a programmatic interface to chat GPT. So we were able to get an open AI API key for yourself and we were able to connect to chat GPT. We were able to give these prompts to create outputs and we can do that by preserving the context and without preserving the context. We also saw what were the various roles, so user role, assistant role, and system roles, which help us in maintaining this output and learning through the program. Along with that, we saw how we can enable the history or clear the history. So now you have almost everything you need to play around and build a few basic applications. So go ahead and build a few applications which you think can be of interest to you.